In this part, we will take up the other two remaining active processes of transport. One is calcium pump. As we talked of different types of pumps like sodium potassium pump, only sodium pump, only potassium pump. Similarly, there are only calcium pump. That means these are the proteins which are going to help in transport of calcium ions. Uh, the location where we find these pumps, one is sarcoplasmic reticulum. That is the endoplasmic reticulum which is found in the muscles. And it acts as a storage place for calcium ions. And these calcium ions are very essential for muscle contraction. And that is why there are these proteins which would help in transport of only calcium ions. The second location where we find calcium pumps are, is presynaptic membrane. On presynaptic membrane also we have these calcium pumps. During uh, the synaptical conduction of impulse when it is going through the synapse, at that time, these calcium ions, they go into the exon end bulb through these pumps. And because of this, those synaptical vesicles which contain neurotransmitters, they rupture. So, presynaptic membrane also has calcium pumps. So, this is one more active transport. The next active transport is known as endocytosis and exocytosis. Endo cytosis and exocytosis. Now this type of process is required when the substance which is to be taken in or to be released or thrown out is bigger than the pore size. These molecules they are coming in because they can pass through the pore size. But if there are some big molecules then there are foldings of plasma membrane which take place. So if we talk of these endocytotic and uh, exocytotic processes, then first let us talk of endocytosis. Endocytosis means big molecules are taken in. And if these big molecules happen to be some kind of solids, then the process is known as phagocytosis. Commonly, this process is known as cell eating. And if liquid is to be taken in, then the process is known as pinocytosis or it is also known as pinocytosis. Or we can also call it cell drinking. Now what exactly happens in these two processes is that the plasma membrane, it undergoes infolding. There would be some infolding which would take place. Suppose this is the substance which is to be taken in. Then finally the substance comes into this vesicle and the vesicle pinches in. If this vesicle, if it has solid, then we will call it phagosome, named after the process. And if it has a liquid, then it will be termed as pinosome or pinosome. Sometimes, uh, let, let us first talk about the examples or the uh, cells which perform these processes. This phagocytosis is performed by WBCs when they engulf the foreign particles. Macrophages also. Macrophages. These cells are called phagocytic cells because they engulf the solid particle. It could be in the form of pathogen also. Another cell which performs this process is amoeba. And amoeba takes in the food by this process of phagocytosis. So these are some common examples where we find phagocytosis taking place. Some liquids are also taken in. Now when the liquids are taken in, the vesicle which is formed will have that liquid content. 
Now there is one slight different process, again endocytotic process, but the membrane has receptors. So these receptors help in binding of certain larger molecules. So after this plasma membrane which has these vesicles with receptors to these receptors bind the substance which is to be taken in. So here also vesicle is formed but there is a difference. The difference is that inside the vesicle are these receptor molecules and to these receptor the substance has attached. Same thing, everything is same. Only difference is instead of just going into that depression of the plasma membrane, the substances are getting attached to the receptor. Here also larger molecules are taken in. They can be in the form of proteins like uh, insulin. So insulin, polypeptides, these bigger molecules, they are taken in by this vesicle formation. In this, everything is being taken in. That means we are talking of endocytosis. The reverse process would be termed as exocytosis. It is also known as cell vomiting or ephagy. So, let us talk about exocytosis here. It is cell vomiting. Or it is also known as ephagy. This is performed where the undigested food or undigested material has to be thrown out. So it is going to go in the reverse direction. That means this vesicle which contains all the waste, it comes closer to the plasma membrane. Here it opens, the waste is thrown out and this vesicle membrane joins with the plasma membrane. So it is going in the opposite direction. So these two are also active processes because here the membrane structure has to change. And when membrane structure changes, it requires ATP. So when we talk of endocytosis and exocytosis, we uh, take these processes as active transport. Endo and exocytosis uh, together are also known as bulk transport. We can also call it bulk transport. And the reason why it is known as bulk transport is when large quantity of substance is taken in or a big substance is taken in, then it is in bulk. That is why these two processes are known as bulk transport. So, these are all active transport processes that we have done and now in the next part we will take up the modifications of plasma membrane.